This is the top 10 best. Who doesn't love a good villain? Whether you love them or hate them, villains are straight. Heck, a lot of the times they're the best part of the story. And the only thing arguably better than a great villain is a great villainess. Well, I wouldn't say they are uncommon. Women villains in movies are usually the catty, popular girl that doesn't like this girl because she gets on my nerves. And to that I say, screw that! You won't find any of that crap on this list, no. The ladies on my list are just as power-hungry, crazy, strategic, or just outright as evil as any man. Heck, in many ways, maybe more. So let's not waste any more time. This is the top 10 best female villains of all time. Not just movies, not just TVs, not just comic books. Everything that I know personally. I've taken everything into consideration that I've seen. There are some stuff that I might have skipped over that I have not seen, and you can put your favorites in the comments below. But for right now, these are the top 10 best villainesses ever. Number 10. Almost every Disney movie has one thing in common. They have great villains. Heck, even the movies that aren't that great usually have something at least in terms of design and creativity. But when it came to picking one of Walt's many evil ladies, there was one that immediately popped into my mind. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me well a witch. But you'll find that nowadays I've mended all my ways. Repented, seen the light and made a switch. Two years. Sometimes all you need to be a great villain is just to be a ton of fun. And no, that's not a slam against her weight. It's the fact that her voice actress, Pat Carroll, is having such a blast with this role. Her <laughs> Her deviousness, her overall design is utterly fantastic. She is a power-hungry sea witch that uses the manipulation of a young girl's love in order to get control of an entire the entire sea! I love how Ursula's scheme really has nothing to do with Ariel. You know, she's just using Ariel as a pawn in order to get to her father. But when Ariel starts winning this seemingly no-win scenario, what does she do? What any good villain does, she cheats! She has a great design, a great voice, an evil plan to rule the entire ocean, and one of the best villain songs ever. Out of all the evil women of Disney, Ursula floats to the top. Number nine. Action movies, for the most part, are a guy's thing. Two men going at each other mano a mano. And when there is women involved in action movies, they're usually the sexy type, flirtatious villain, or just a pawn to the bad guy. Or she's just a woman bad guy because we got a woman hero. And while the pawn or the flirty characters can be good, I prefer a villainess with a little bit more bite. This is Mama. Somewhere in this block are two judges. I want him dead. Until I get what I want, the block is locked down. All clan, every level. Not the judges down. Everyone else clear the corridors and stay the out of our way until the shooting stops. Mama from Dread is a great villain. She runs an entire drug kingpin out of this sweetly innocently named place called Peach Trees. And it's basically a building that's the size of an entire city. She used to be a prostitute but slowly started taking over the entire organization of the building and worked her way from top to bottom and cleared everyone out and now she's in control. Everyone answers to her. And when one day two judges cross her path, 
she uh, handles things with a, a, a calm and rational manner. Oh wait, no she doesn't. She locks down the entire building and says, Yeah, I want these two judges dead, and until they are, uh, nobody's getting in and out. So, you're gonna all starve to death unless these judges die, so have at them. I mean, she's sick, twisted, but uses fear to control the entire building to kill these judges, and she doesn't care who she has to go through to get her way. But I also like the subtlety that the actress Lena Headley uh, brings to this role, because you do get this feeling that she does care about a few of her men. She's really pissed off when Dredd kills uh, one of her men, and then she says to another guy that was captured, she says, like, I would kill you right now if I haven't lost too many men already today. So she isn't completely heartless, but she's also power-hungry and will do anything to get her way. And it's stuff like that, the subtlety that comes to the character, that really made me think this is a great villain, and it is why she is number nine on this list. Black legend says she feminized the guy with her teeth, took over his business interests, and never looked back. Anyone else, you'd say it was bull****, right? No, we mama. Her trademark is violence. Number eight. Well, I do love me a good mastermind. Sometimes you just can't compete with straight up crazy. Any for God's Shh, darling. Trust me. God's sake. It's for the best. Hey, please! Almost done. Just one more. God, I love you. This is a horror movie. I don't care what anyone says. Kathy Bates' portrayal of this character, Annie Wills, is way scarier than almost any monster that you will ever see in theaters. And she doesn't have a big scheme or anything. She just is taking care of this author that crashed near her home that she happens to be a fan of. And then one day when she reads that he killed off her favorite character ever, she goes nuts. She can't be dead. Misery Chastain cannot be dead. Annie, in 1871, women often died in childbirth. But her spirit is the important thing, and Misery's spirit is still alive. I don't want her spirit! I want her! And you murdered her! Because to her, that character was real. And she loved that character. And she will do anything, including breaking this guy's legs, in order to get that character back. She is George R. R. Martin's, Joss Whedon's, and Stephen Moffat's worst nightmare. I love how Kathy Bates plays this role. Just a lone, mentally unstable person who lives out on her own, and the only social interaction she really gets is by reading about people in books. To her, books are real people. The, the things in books are real people because she doesn't interact with anybody else. And because of that, those characters on the page are just as alive to her as a best friend, and when those characters die, she feels like he actually killed a friend of hers. Then she goes from raging psycho to innocent old lady. Oh, I'm glad that you're gonna do some healing in my home after I break your legs! Most of the ladies on this list I like for how devious and intelligent they are, but Annie is on this list because she literally scares me. And there was Rocket Man trying to get out, and here comes the cliff. And just before the car went off the cliff, he jumped free, and all the kids cheered. But I didn't cheer. I stood right up and started shouting, This isn't what happened last week! Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us! This isn't fair! He didn't get out of the cock a duty car! Number seven. In the world of fiction, there's only one villain role that is dominated by women, and that would be witches. And while there have been plenty of great cackling over-the-top witches like the Wicked Witch of the West, I prefer one who's just a stone-cold witch. Go on ahead. Gather the faithful. If it's a war Aslan wants, <laughs> it's a war he shall get. I must let you know that the Chronicles of Narnia is actually a 
childhood favorite of mine, the books. They're one of the few book series that I actually read. And in my mind, Tilda Swinton did an amazing job as the White Witch. She comes at the role in a different way than I saw most people portray the White Witch. Most of the time when I heard her in audiobooks or, you know, a lower budget version of the Chronicles of Narnia, she's over the top and yelling, oh, we must get them, and blah, 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 which makes her, you know, it's like, wow, Edmund, really, you believed this woman was on the level? Yeah. That must have been some good Turkish delight. But Tilda Swinton goes at it in the opposite direction. She says her lines calmly and quietly. Quietly, rarely ever raising her voice. Edmund, you look so cold. Come and sit with me. This not only makes the reason Edmund believes her more believable, but it also gives her this confidence that she's okay with it. You know, nothing gets to her. She's going to just go out and do her thing and kill these children and... Go home and sit on her ice to their own. No, 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 we're not doing that. But it really makes her look imposing because of how quietly and calm she is at all times. I love how in the, the final battle she doesn't say a word. She's just staring with those intense eyes and a smile, an evil smile, and just, you know, freezing the crap out of everybody, turning them into stone with her wand. She doesn't say a single word until Aslan shows up. Tilda Swinton really sells this role with her eyes, and, you know, her, her character is so good, they bring her back in two of the next Narnia movies for quick cameos, and let me just say, neither one of those scenes are exactly in the books. I mean, sure, in Prince Caspian, they're trying to raise the White Witch, but she never manifests herself like she does in the movie. You know you can't do this alone. And don't get me wrong, like I love Prince Caspian, but it's almost like that's the still the best scene in the movie is the scene with Tilda Swinton. She's just that good. The White Witch may be cold, but that didn't bother me anyway. Oh, okay, okay, what? What? I need to have one. I have no interest in prisoners. Kill them all. <laughs> Number six. Sometimes the best type of villains are the ones that can keep you guessing. The ones that can make you think one thing, but before you realize what their plan is, it switches to something completely different. And who can hide their motivations better than someone who can just change their face? You know, people like you are the reason I was afraid to go to school as a child. Mystique. Now, Mystique in the movies have two versions. One is uh, the troubled woman who wants to do the right thing but finds it hard to do so, and the other one who's more or less a pawn in Magneto. And I love Jennifer Lawrence, but I prefer the pawn, played by Rebecca Romain. She's mostly on this list, just, like, not for one portrayal in particular. Not the, just the movie version, not just the animated series, or, or just all of it. Movies, comic books, the series, just her as a character in general. I don't have a definitive version, because in the movie, she's a pawn of Magneto. In the X-Men cartoon, she's a pawn of Apocalypse. Evolution, once again, a pawn of Magneto. And then Wolverine in the X-Men, she has this weird past relationship with Wolverine that... I don't know, that, just, that was just odd to me. So I think the definitive version of Mystique is the version in the comics. Because that's the one who got out from under the thumb of Magneto and is doing her own things as a villain. I mean, she leads her own squad of the Brotherhood of Mutants. She, for a while, she had, like, her own island, and she actually went up against Magneto a few times. I mean, in the all-new X-Men run, she was, like, tricking the X-Men at every turn. Every time they thought they had her, she kept on outsmarting them. 
But even in those previous versions of her that aren't the greatest, she is always scheming, always tricky. It makes you wonder if you can really trust those that you care about, as she might be hiding as one of them at any moment. <coughs> you must... You must stop Magneto. <coughs> I'll get right on that, pub. <coughs> I have him. Mystique truly is the master of deception. You! You did this! <laughs> yes, I did do it. And now things are about to get much worse. Number five. Anyway you look at it, there are two types of villains. The villains you love, and the villains you hate. Sometimes people say, oh, there's also the villains you love to hate. No, that's just hating them. You love to hate them, meaning you hate them. Now, most of the ladies on this list, I love because I love their characters, I love their performances, and I just love them as villains. But this one, I just hate so much. And you just... You gotta give her credit for that. Long may she reign. Long may she reign. I will say this right here, right now. I hate Cersei more than Joffrey. Yeah, yeah, I know. Joffrey, while he was an annoying, hateful little douche, uh, and yes, I did take many joys in his death, in the... he was still just a kid. You can't fully blame him for the way he turned out. You, you gotta put some blame on his parents, and yeah, I put a lot of blame on the feet as, of Cersei. Mostly because of how power-hungry she is, how petty she is, and how she has no interest in anybody except satisfying her own needs. If the city falls, these fine women should be in for a bit of a rape. Half of them will have <laughs> in their bellies come the morning. You'll be glad of your red flower then. When a man's blood is up, anything with tits looks good. Precious thing that you will look very, very good. You might say, no, she cared about her other son, Tommen, quite a bit. Yep, cared about him so much that she brought a religious group to power only to have his wife arrested and thrown into prison. And when that religious group turned against her, she then dealt with it in a calm manner with a delicate touch with... All right, she blew them up. She blew up the building with her son's wife in it. Yikes. And when this son that she supposedly cares for so much kills himself in, well, let's be honest here, the most pathetic way possible. I'm out. Goodbye. I do not see one tear on her face as she is crowned queen again. Because in that moment, she gets what she wants. The power and the control. I may not like her as a character, but you gotta respect her drive and ambition, and you also gotta respect the actress Lena Headley, who I would like to congratulate for being the first person ever to be on my top ten list twice as two different characters. And the fact that she can play crazy psychopath and, well, okay, a different type of crazy psychopath is pretty impressive. It just goes to show her range and how well she can play bad, and Cersei's just one of those villains that you may hate her, but you're supposed to. And you gotta give her credit for succeeding greatly. Order your man to step aside or there will be violence. Number four. 
One type of woman villain you don't really see a whole lot is the military leader. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about women villains who have an army, because we got plenty of witches and queens who have armies at their backs. I'm talking about military leaders who uses their tactics and power to gain control. There might not be a lot of them, but I can think of one that takes things to a whole new level. I have created a new Earth Empire and I will continue to lead it into the future myself, bringing about a new era of prosperity for my people. We love you, Kubira! And let me assure my fellow leaders of one thing. Anyone who crosses our borders or stands in our way will be crushed. The Legend of Korra, the Avatar series sequel, seemed to want Korra to face off against male people. I don't know if this was intentional or if this was just the best fit for the stories they were trying to tell, but for their last season, we, they give us this amazing villain called Kavira. And in my mind, she is Korra's best villain. Yeah. And I don't say that lightly, because I like Amon, and I like Zaheer, and... I've willed myself to forget all about Season 2 except for the first Avatar in two-parter episode, but I think Kuvira is the best. Like a lot of good villains, she starts out with the best intentions. Her country is in dismay and is in total chaos, and she is one that's wanting to unite the country again. But the more control she takes, the more power she wants, and before you know it, she wants the entire Earth Kingdom at her control. And she has the army and technology to back it up. Stand down or we will attack. I don't think you understand the power I possess. Let me make it clear. I also love that she isn't really uh, going, resorting to dirty tricks like other villains. Like, there's a scene where, you know, these uh, airbender people are trying to help out this village, and Kavira says, hey, you can go under my protection. They're like, no, we don't want your protection. And she's like, okay, that's fine. But then their supplies are raided and stolen, and they say, okay, we'll go under your protection. Now, I kept waiting for the scene where they were going to cut to her paying off these bandits saying, good work, thanks for stealing all this stuff, now they're under my control. But that scene never happened because Kuvira isn't the person to cheat her way. She's all about force. I know what happens to cities who don't want to hand over control to you. Then you know what's coming for Zaofu. Make no mistake, the only reason she didn't just take over this village is she knew they were desperate and would have to go under her control eventually. But there are some cities that are totally not in chaos, and she... Yeah, she takes them out! But I like how her intentions aren't just selfish. She is trying to unify her country. She is trying... It's the, the goal that she wants to do the right thing but it becomes an addiction, and she wants more and more power, and she kind of forgets why she even wants this sort of thing. Like, for example, her goal at the beginning is just to unify the, the whole entire Earth Kingdom. Okay, well, she basically does take control of the entire Earth Kingdom, and then now she's like, okay, now I'm going to attack Republic City, because it was formerly Earth Kingdom territory. And you're like, whoa, whoa, there's no chaos going on here that was in your kingdom. Why are you attacking this? She's like, because I want to unite our country fully. And you're like, yeah, that's a little extreme. I have a feeling that if Kuvira wasn't stopped, we'd have a whole nother way, like, we'd have, we'd have the Fire Nation all over again, except instead of the Fire Nation trying to take over the world like in the original Avatar series, it'd be the Earth Kingdom trying to take over the entire world. Not to mention that her mastery of metal bending is second to none. And I'm including Toph. Power-hungry, manipulative, and as cold as steel, Kavira is just a great villain. ...is not yet complete. There is a grave injustice that must be corrected. As you all know, after the Hundred Year War, Avatar Aang, along with Fire Lord Zuko, stole Earth Empire land and formed the United Republic. This land belongs to the people of the Earth Empire, and it's time to take it back. Republic City will be ours! All hail the Great Uniter! Number 3 
playing a bad guy is a tricky thing for some villains. For some people, they find themselves on the wrong side of the law, but you'd be hard-pressed to call them evil. Still, the lady I'm thinking of doesn't work with the best crowd. I tried to play by the rules, but no! They wouldn't let me go straight! Society is to blame! Back off, rich boy! I'm armed! As I said before, sometimes the pawn of the bigger villain can be an interesting character. The reason that Harley Quinn became so famous is because in a lot of ways she's just as innocent as the reader. She is a kind, innocent, playful heart, but she's been corrupted to the point where she won't even blink if the Joker cuts somebody's tongue out. She would just make a joke. Cat got your tongue? Well, no, it was Mr. J. <laughs> I thought I told you to get gas. We're broke, remember? What was I supposed to do? Fill the tank, shoot the guy, and drive off? Mm-hmm. Now you tell me! She will go along no matter what horrific thing the Joker does to other people, or to her. And there's one other thing you're not getting. What? That you let Batman right to my doorstep! few adaptations of this character, including the most recent version of the Suicide Squad movie played by Margot Robbie, but let's face it, the original played by Arlene Sorkin will just never be topped. Hey, remember me? That big charity bash a few years back? The one the Joker robbed? I was the clown girl holding the gun on ya! The innocent, playful nature of the character just comes alive with her performance, and it's so great because she was supposed to just be a little henchwoman. But people liked her more and more and wanted to find out more and more about her, and now she's one of DC's most popular characters. I mean, even I'm in the bandwagon. I got a Harley Quinn glass. Ha! And here you thought I was just another bubble-headed blonde bimbo. Well, the joke's on you. I'm not even a real blonde. And I think she's a great creation because it's really hard to play a character in abu an abusive relationship without them becoming sort of a downer. I mean, I know that's not really nice to say about people in people in actual abusive relationships. It's a lot serious, but in 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 fiction, it's hard to feel for a character because you just like oh, you're sad about them. But for Harley Quinn, you're either laughing at her silly antics or are legitimately sad for the horrible situation she's in. I mean, because she's really funny. I dare say she might be funnier than Mark Hamill's Joker. But there's also this tragedy with her. Because deep down, she's just an innocent person trapped in a relationship with nothing but abuse, neglect, and loneliness. You've forgotten what I told you a long time ago. One of the painful truths of comedy. You always take shots from folks who just don't get the joke. Ah! And don't call me Puddin. She's just one baddie that will either leave you laughing or crying, or maybe a bit of both. Finally see that slime for what he is. A murderous, manipulative, irredeemable... Angel! Number two. The thing that sometimes makes a villain so tragic is that they've been so close to staying on the right path. But because of their own untrustworthy nature, they end up destroying everything that they love. I have a name too, Goliath. The humans gave it to me long ago. You should know it before you die. I am Demona. Demona is a villain who has a noble cause but goes on a dark path in order to obtain her goal. And because of the shortcut she takes, she ends up basically just destroying everything in her path that she wanted to protect. I've stayed alive because I don't trust anyone. But why did you do it? You can ask me that. After how they treated us, they had to pay. All humanity has to pay for what they did to our kind. There is good and evil in all of us, human and gargoyle alike. You should know that more than anyone. Don't you see? None of this would have happened if it weren't for you. Well, I also find
find her character more interesting because it wasn't just like she makes one mistake and all of a sudden now she's bad for the rest of her life. We, later in the show, we see flashbacks to a time where she had a second chance. A second chance to lead humanity on a path of... Uh, away from the path of ignorance and onto a path of acceptance. But because of her own untrustworthy nature, she ends up burning that bridge that would have been a great help to her, but she just couldn't trust it, and therefore she ends up destroying her own chance for a second chance. Why? I merely offer you a sample of what you planned for me. I planned for you to govern by my side, and now because of you, my kingdom is in flames! Spare me your righteous outrage, Macbeth. I know you would have betrayed me and my kind to win the approval of the English. Never would I have done so! We have been allies for 37 years! Too long, it seems. But she's also a fun villain as she takes delight in every evil thing that she does. I mean, there's a moment in the show where, like, a curse is laid on the, the city and, uh, all the humans are turned to stone at night. And, well, uh, let's just... This is how she handles it. <laughs> Another human bites the dust. Or rather, turns to dust. Here, let me help you with those packages. <laughs> Where does the time go? Sheesh, Disney, you approved this? She's going on a killing spree! Just because they're stone now doesn't mean they're gonna be when they get turned back into- Oh my gosh, what would that even look like? <laughs> Ugh. Oh my gosh, what was that? It was a lot of feeling, wasn't it, Bill? Bill? Okay, who threw up on the floor and where's Bill? But I think the thing that really makes her interesting is that you can always tell that she was hiding her sadness and inner torment underneath all of that. You know, that was more of a bravado, trying to push this image up of an evil woman, you know, with all this, you know, schemes and whatnot. And she did have them, but she was deep down really sad and knew that the plight on her people was mostly her fault. The Vikings destroyed my clan. Who betrayed the castle to the Vikings? The hunter hunted us down. Who created the hunter? Canmore destroyed the last of us. Who betrayed Macbeth to Canmore? Your thirst for vengeance has only created more sorrow. End the cycle, Demona. Give us the code. The access code is alone. But she won't let herself accept that. She pushes the blame on the human that couldn't keep their people alive, and humanity in general for belittling them. She won't never accept that it was her fault, but deep down, she knows that it was. And honestly, she might have had a shot at the number one spot of this if it wasn't for that... the fact that later in the season we get an evil Goliath clone who kind of uses her and then doesn't really care for her, but she cares for him. It was stupid. Honestly, I kind of stopped watching after that. I really hated that. I mean, give me the hate-filled, manipulative, untrustworthy, evil, cackling, red-eyed monster any day. Demona is a villain who shows you what happens when you try to take shortcuts to change. You only end up making things worse. Goliath's time is over. I am the leader now. Swear fealty to me and I'll let you live. Very well then. Die hiding like the cowards you are. Number one. Number one. The moment I decided to do this list, I already knew who my number one pick was. I mean, honestly, the rest of the, these women on this list shuffled. I, I must have shuffled it about three or four times, but my number one was always the same. I think the reason that is is she has all the other things these previous women that I've talked about have in spades. She's powerful, smart, and a little crazy. She's a master manipulator and strategist, but there's also a little tragedy with this character, as she's all these things, and she's only 
14 years old. Iroh is a traitor, and your brother Zuko is a failure. I have a task for you. Ever since I became a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, I've wanted to do this list for the sole purpose of putting Azula in the number one spot. Now don't worry, I thought, I thought this list through, I thought it up ways and down, and nobody topped her in my mind. For me, she's the Darth Vader of villainesses, you know? Not the one with all the power, but the one who's going out there and doing all the cool stuff and is outsmarting the heroes at every turn. We have to tell the Earth King right away. Oh, don't worry. I'll be sure to let him know. She is relentless. You can see that with her determination and how she hunts down the Avatar in the episode The Chase. Where she's just chasing these guys and all they want to do is have a nap but she keeps on going at them and going at them and she doesn't seem to tire while the other people can barely keep their eyes open. And she keeps going at it and doesn't retreat until literally every person is against her where she decides to retreat. But not before getting one last cheap shot in. You can see her strategic power prowess and how she almost single-handedly takes down the entire Earth Kingdom, a feat that the Fire Nation had been trying to do for over a hundred years, and without even an army, she does it from the inside. With nothing but her tactics, her persistence, and sheer utter ruthlessness. The fact is, they don't know which one of us is going to be sitting on that throne, and which one is going to be bowing down. But I know, and you know. Well... You've beaten me at my own game. Don't flatter yourself. You were never even a player. Then there is his social manipulation. Not only does she manipulate her friends into coming along with her and doing what she wants, but she also manipulates her brother who hates her back onto her side because she, can, she convinces him that he'll get what he wants because of it. Just in the way she's pushing the right button, she's going after exactly what he wants. She knows him so well that she can put the right buttons and turn this guy that wanted to challenge her to an Agni Kai, probably to the death, to now I'm on your side. And also you can see her social manipulation with other people, like during the solar eclipse, when she knows about the battle and Team Avatar is all after her, and she's able to use their hatred of her and manipulation to waste all of their time and basically win the invasion because of it. My favorite prisoner used to mention you all the time. She was convinced you were going to come rescue her. Of course, you never came. And she gave up on you. Ah! Come and get it. Where is Suki? And it's so cool that even with no bending, she's still five steps ahead of every one of those people. She is the complete package. She can pick up when people are lying to her. What could I possibly gain by letting you get all the glory for defeating the Avatar? Unless somehow the Avatar was actually alive. She can bend lightning. And she can use fear to manipulate anyone to get her way. And fear, in the end, is what is her undoing. Her only control over people was through fear. And, as, you know, if you all you care about is your own self-preservation, that will work. But as soon as people have something that they care about more, then that doesn't work on them anymore. And when her friends are given something that they actually want to fight for, they no longer, their, her fear has no longer any control over them. I guess you just don't know people as well as you think you do. You miscalculated. I love Zuko more than I fear you. No, you miscalculated! You should have feared me more! <laughs> 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 
And that betrayal pushes her out of whack because it challenges everything that she believes in. She starts not trusting anybody, pushes everybody away that could help her and trusts her and has her undying loyalty, but she pushes them all away. I remember when I saw this, I'm like, Azula, you're smarter than this, why are you doing this? But it's because her whole worldview has been shattered. It doesn't make any logical sense for Tylee and Mei to throw their lives away. And so when the logic just doesn't work in her mind, she snaps. And when that is taken away from her, she has nowhere to turn to. She has no leaning shoulder to lean on as someone who truly cares about her. She has no one to turn to with her f concerns and fears because she's only used manipulation and fear to control people. And it reveals truly how lonely she really is. And that is a tragedy. As I said, she's only 14 years old in this series. She was just a troubled child, but instead of being encouraged and loved to help her through these evil impulses of hers, those impulses were encouraged and pushed forward and they molded her into an evil master strategist with no empathy or love all your life you've used fear to control people like your friends may and ty lee well what choice do i have trust is for fools fear is the only reliable way even you fear me no i love you azula i do Tragic, evil, and arguably smarter than anyone else in the show, Azula, in my mind, is the greatest villainess of all time. So what now? Now? Now it's over. You're tired and you have no place to go. You can run, but I'll catch you. I'm not running. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to tell me your favorite villainess in the comments below if she wasn't on this list. Tell me why you think they're the best or second best or whatever, because in my mind, Azula is number one. So, I'm Laser Dude. Until next time, so long.